help to that a little bit so we are going to focus on that today and uh, next week we'll try and get some music therapy sort of sessions in place okay should i start should i share my screen yeah please Okay, uh, so first of all, let us understand why knee, because uh, knee is uh, basically lying somewhere between our foot and the hip where the force transference takes place. So most of the times it's the knee that takes the brunt of all the overwork that we do, all the long standing, uh, long time of standing that we spend in or long hours of walking or just having uh, a little bit extra weight which which basically puts a lot of load on the knees so knees are the first ones to start showing symptoms of degeneration along with back of course but what happens also is because of all the weight and all the compression that's coming on the knee the knee starts degenerating uh, in as we grow older also because of a lot of hormonal imbalance that happens post menopausal in women the knee or uh, basically starts degenerating a little faster, has a little more stiffness and weakness than all the other joints and starts peaking and giving pain a little faster than all the other joints. So degeneration process overall is uh, a little quicker. It's a little more evident and uh, more most complained of as we start growing old. Uh, uh, Dr. Harsha, uh, we cannot see the presentation. We just see the folders on a screen. Oh. Please. Just a second. Switch the screen, yeah. Yeah, I'll share screen again. Uh, now is it visible? Yeah, it's visible now. Okay, so sorry for before. So, uh, as we were saying that aging and degeneration happens uh, earlier and faster in the knee. Uh, now, in terms of how to identify the degeneration, we usually start feeling stiffness and weakness or uh, more of me getting a little stiff, getting fatigued faster. So these are the signs we want to pick up for, for seeing that the knee is not keeping healthy. So this is something uh, is the which is the primary symptom which we would be seeing. Now, what leads to... Um, what, what is the contribution factor is any sort of injury that you have had previously, any lack of stability, any ligament injuries, any instabilities that you have had, uh, any accidents or fractures around the knee, which will lead to degeneration of the knee faster. Also, obesity or having a little extra weight puts a lot of pressure through the knees. So the knee starts to degenerate and, uh, faster in older, uh, in patients who have, or people who have higher weight, because the pressure that's going through the joint is much more, which leads to degeneration of cartilage faster. So all of these things affect the knees very, very quickly and uh, very efficiently and effectively. So we need to take care of the knees as earlier as possible. Now, uh, what all things can otherwise lead to having a bad knee or starting developing, starting to develop symptoms in the knee is what we call restricted mobility. If your joints are not able to move enough, they are not getting a good range. They are not getting good nutrition. Uh, they are working in the small available range. So causing wear and tear in only this much range. So if we have just this much range, we are going to use that and we are going to keep uh, having a friction at that same spot, leading it to degenerate faster. But this is not just regarding knees. If we have hip, uh, hips, which are very, very tight, then the force transference that occurs during daily activities would come more and more on the knees. Similarly, most of us have stiff ankles because we don't uh, use Indian toilets no longer. So we don't sit all the way down. We don't have a lot of sitting down activities. So the ankles tend to get stiffer quickly, which also leads to uh, lack of sh shock absorption from the ankle affecting the knee. Lack of flexibility. So when we call, when we say flexibility, is nothing but lack of muscles to lengthen. The uh, the muscles lack the ability to lengthen to their extent. So when force absorption, force generation is what is going to get affected. 
which will again affect the knee to a great extent. Also lack of strength and stability. So basically, if you don't have enough strength, you can't generate a lot of force and the muscles also can't absorb a lot of force that is coming through with every time the foot is impacting the floor. So that's where the joints and the bones take most of the strain more than the shock absorption that should happen through the muscles. Now, whenever we call, uh, whenever we say any sort of rehabilitation or any movement that we want to produce, we usually talk about a movement pyramid. Now, let us imagine the base of the pyramid. We call it the base because it's very, very essential. Without that, we can't build further and we can't achieve higher uh, level of efficiency in our movements. So the first base is formed by mobility and flexibility. Uh, so if we don't have enough muscles to enough length in the muscles to move, if we don't have enough movement in the joints, then we can't achieve the next level, which is strength and stability. You can only use the muscles effectively if they are working at their effective length, efficient length. So we need to have good flexibility in order to train the muscles for strength, in order to bulk them up and in order to use them effectively. Only if we have good flexibility, that means we are able to move in a full range and we are able to have strength in that full range, only then we can hold that, uh, hold that joint into a stable position. Let's imagine two pieces of straw and a rubber band going around. If the rubber band has a, is stuck at one end, we it will not be able to move the straws effectively. Same way, if the rubber band is tight and if it's tight at one end and loose at the other, it's going to move full on to one end of the straw much more than the other end. Same way, what this is how the muscles will work around. If they are tight at one end, they will not move the one end of the joint. And the other end, if it's weak, they are not going to hold that other joint. So it's going to cause a lot of movement in between two uh, bones, which are forming the joint, leading it to degenerate faster. So that is why it is very important to work on all three things and not just the knee when we say we want to keep our knees healthy. So we want to work on movement and mobility at hip, at the knee itself and the ankle and effectively the spine because all of the force finally translates to spine. We want to work on strength in again ankle, foot as well. Very, very important because that's the first thing that comes in contact when you try to walk and put your foot down. Uh, then foot and ankle, then knee itself and hip and again your back muscles. We are going to look, go through some functional exercises because uh, it all depends on what exercise we want to do, what activities we want to do. If we don't train the muscles to do the activities we want to do, we will never be able to strengthen them in a, uh, in a functional manner. So we are going to do some functional exercises and some flexibility exercises. Now, why flexibility at the end? Because we need the muscles to be warm enough to stretch them and pull, the, pull both the ends away from each other. Now, uh, as we have seen earlier also, we want to be alert if we are, uh, while exercising, if you find any sort of fatigue, any sort of dizziness, any palpitations, if you feel your heart is racing, if you're feeling shortness of breath, if you're feeling dizzy or giddy, or uh, anything unusual fatigue, you want to stop immediately and you want to call for help. Also, if any of these symptoms start developing suddenly, there is sudden unexplained pain which is not a soreness, if there is sharp pain, if there is swelling, you want to visit a doctor. Or uh, if any of these symptoms occur, please stop the exercises and seek for help. And again, anybody who has knee pain or knee mobility restrictions, who has had back pain or mobility restrictions, please do not try to do all the exercises to the great ex maximum extent. I may be able to show them to a full extent, but when you are doing stretches, when you are doing strength, you want to take your own call as to how much you want to push and how much you want to and when you want to stop. Yes. Now, uh, most importantly, let us understand you want to stop when you have sharp pain. If you have any uh, excessive pulling or stretchy pain going, going through the whole leg or going through the back. And if you have develop, if you're developing any heaviness, if you're developing any tingling or numbness, you want to avoid doing that exercise. Yes. Let's start with exercises. We are going to start first with our basic mobility exercises. Uh, is everyone with me? 
if if any of you want to want to keep their videos on i can correct uh, exercises if they are going wrong if if the videos are on i can help you out with that okay if not we are just we'll start with the exercises okay we are going to start mainly with ankle exercises first very simple ones if you are all sitting in a chair we are just going to keep our legs down and we are just going to try and make ankles pull your ankles up and down just pull them all the way up get a slight stretch in the calf and pull them down all the way so you are touching your heels on the floor your knees are straight don't straighten your knees don't keep them in the air heels are touching the floor push your ankles down and pull them up all the way let's do 10 of these down and up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 and 10 okay now we are going to make ankle circles i hope everyone is with me and is understanding the exercises okay so now we are going to do ankle circles again your feet are slightly off the ground but not all the way straight slightly relax knees bent and you are going to make full ankle circles all the way try to make as big a circle as you can let's go clockwise first let's go big circle try to make with your toes 2 three, 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now let's go anti clockwise so opposite direction try to make as big a circle as you can get a good stretch across the shin and the calves 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 perfect is everyone with me next exercise we are going to do in standing so you are going to stand against the wall i'm keeping this on the floor so that you can see my knees and ankles okay you are going to stand near the wall you want to keep one knee in front of the other one back okay now without lifting the heel off hold on to the wall with both your hands you want to try and touch your knee to the wall don't let your heel lift off heel stays down try to touch your knee to the wall and come back get a slight stretch at the back of your calf right here and come back so knee to the wall and come back knee to the wall and come back the other leg other heel can lift off that is okay yes let's try to do it knee to the wall one left leg first two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's try the other leg now. Again, right leg is front, left leg is back. Right heel has to stay down on the floor. Try to take good support from the wall and try to touch knee to the wall. Get a stretch at the lower calf and come back. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect. Comfortable, everybody. Okay. So now we are going to start working on little bit on the knees. 
what you are going to do is say good wall support okay or hold the edge of the table or the edge of the chair back of the chair you want to try to touch your heel to your buttock but now when you are doing this you don't want your leg to go back and arch your back or you don't want to take your leg front you want to keep your thigh straight right next to the other leg and you want to try and bend the leg, knee and try to touch your heel to your buttock and come down so straight up and down one let's do one leg each side two three four you will get a slight stretch in the front five which is good six seven eight nine ten now the other knee again keep your thigh straight don't let it lift off or don't let it go back and don't lean from your back back remains relaxed relaxed and try to touch your heel to the butt one two three four five six seven eight nine comfortable now we come to knee hip okay so now to do this we want to try and work on all the possible ranges of the hip so first we are going to start with hip circles so what we are going to do is keep our feet a little apart shoulder width apart keep your hands on your hips by both the sides on the waist you want to try and make as big a circle as you can so you want to start from the right side try to push your front hip front and right then bring it back bring it to the left and front left back right back as you push your hip back you will get a slight stretch in the back of the thigh which is what is good and which is expected okay let's start five circles clockwise five anti clockwise so i'm going to start with right back left back left front right front that's one let's keep going to make as big a circle as you can try to keep your knees straight three don't bend your knees and push your hips back four and five now let's go reverse so i'm going to start right front go to left front left back right back yes let's go right front left front left back right back knee straight get a good stretch and make as big a circle as you can smooth movement 3 4 and 5 yes these were hip circles so we tried opening the back of the thigh and the front of the hips now we want to open up the hip joint and a little bit of the front thigh so what we are going to do hold either the wall take good support from wall or edge of the table or back of the chair and you want to swing your leg front and back okay now if you have got back pain be careful of pushing back don't push all the way back but you are going to try and lean your leg as loose as you can let it swing like a pendulum okay let's go five repetitions front and back 1 2 3 4 5 yes let's turn around take support from the other hand again take weight on the right leg and swing the left one leave it loose like a pendulum 2 3 4 and 5 now we try opening the front and back now we want to open up the sides of the knee and the inner thigh okay so you can hold from the front across a wall or a chair and you are going to swing your leg in and out okay so hold the chair and let your leg swing in and out let's do 1 2 3 4 5 now right leg is taking weight we are going to swing the left leg in and out 1 2 3 Four and five. 
perfect comfortable everyone now let's start working a little bit on the strength so let's start from ankles and then go up so first thing what we are going to do is start working on the calf strength so we are going to stand and do heel raises so we are going to try and stand on the toes basically okay so i will show you from here you are going to take wall support again hold the hands nicely supported your feet are shoulder width apart a good support from the wall you just want to raise your heels go on your toes and come back now when you come back you don't want to come back fast and bang your heels into the ground you want to come down nice and slow all the way up go on your toes and slowly come down touch your heels down okay now when this is happening you will tend to lean front in order to go up so this shouldn't be happy you want to maintain good distance between your hands elbow and the wall if the distance between elbow and the wall reduces that means you are leaning forward so avoid that make sure to maintain equal distance feet hip width apart and let's go on your toes one slowly come down two slowly touch your knees down three we are going to do 10 of these four five six seven eight Nine and ten. Super. Now we try strengthening back of the leg. Now we also want a very strong front leg or the shin. So to do that, what we are going to do is something called as toe taps. Okay, we have another variation of it, which is walking on the toes, walking on the heels. But today we will start with toe taps. So what you are going to do is stand again, hip width apart. you want to keep one leg steady lift the other leg toes off the floor and push them down so you want to make as much noise as you can with your toes on the floor so lift one other one stay steady push this down lift the other one up so we are going to alternate let's try and do 20 of these is everyone with me stand hip distance apart heels down Lift your toes off and push them down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can't see your leg. Yeah. Okay. So we are standing here, hip width apart. Lift the toes and bang them down. Let's go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yes. So that was to strengthen the front of your shin muscles. Same. We also can walk on the heels. Walk on the toes. okay which we will do later as a part of functional activity now we want to strengthen the knees in standing so we are going to start with strengthening back of the knee first so what we are going to do is hold the wall try to be as close to the wall as you can or get against a pillar like i have here so i'm going to stand sideways if i want to work on my left knee my left knee is touching the wall right leg is front so it's free to move i'm getting a good support and balance okay i'm going to take good support keep my thigh touching the wall and i'm going to bend the knee so what i'm not allowing it to do is i'm not allowing it to come front in order to bend the knee don't let this happen or don't bend front to touch the heel to the buttock we want to use the back of thigh muscles hamstrings so you're going to take wall support get into a corner if possible if not get against the wall flat okay and just keep the front of the knee touching the wall and bend the knee try to touch the heel to the butt let's go 1 2 3 4 feel some pressure and being directed at the back of the knee back of the thigh 6 7 
सेवन एट नाइन टेन यस कंफर्टेबल नाउ लेट्स डू इट ऑन दी अदर लेग सो फॉर लेफ्ट लेग सेम वे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टैंड अगेंस्ट द वॉल फ्रंट ऑफ माय लेफ्ट नी टचिंग द वॉल बैक टू लेफ्ट एंड आई एम गोइंग टू ट्राई एंड बेंड माय नी ट्राई टू टच द हील टू द बॉटम टू फील द प्रेशर एट द बैक ऑफ द थाई थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन and ten. yes so that's for the back of the thigh for the front of the thigh we want to do an exercise in sitting but let's finish all the exercises in standing and then go to the sitting exercises okay now we want to strengthen the hip muscles because they are as we see they are the big muscles so they are the ones that will absorb the shock every time i walk my foot goes on the floor and the whole force gets transferred hip has to work to absorb that shock to offload the knee okay so we want to strengthen the big hip muscle which is the big buttock muscle so what we are going to do is do kick backs but when i do kick backs you will feel the hip muscle bulking up but you will also see that the back is arching you are leaning forward or you are leaning sideways now we don't want that to happen so what we are going to do take support from the wall with one hand keep your back flat Tummy tucked in. You can also hold the back of the chair, okay, or the table. Now just don't lean front. You want to take good weight on the other leg, okay, and then tuck your tummy in. So pull your belly button in. Keep your back flat and kick straight back. You'll feel the hip muscle bulking up. Yes. Let's do ten repetitions. Keep your left leg down. Hold the chair back of the chair. Keep your belly button tucked in and kick straight back. One and slow, no jerk. Two, you shouldn't see the back arching. Three, four, five, six, seven. You can keep one hand at the back to feel if the back is arching. Eight, nine, ten. Yes. Now let's do the other side. So same way now you are taking weight on the right leg. You are holding the back of the chair. Pull your belly button in and kick back with your left leg. Keep one hand at the back to check if you are arching. One, two, knee remains straight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Comfortable, everyone. Okay. Now next is to strengthen the side portion of the hip. Okay. So this is also very important because it keeps you leveled on the floor. Now to do this, you want to kick sideways, but not straight side. So this is straight back. This is straight side. I want to kick in between. So I am kicking diagonal. you can see again side straight side straight back now i want to find the midpoint of these two okay now when i try to kick diagonally what will automatically happen is i'll bend to this side i'm kicking with the right leg i tend to bend my back to the left which we don't want okay so you want to squeeze your buttocks so left buttock keeps you down kick tuck your belly button in a little bit and you want to kick oblique take support avoid leaning to the left okay ready let's go take weight on the left take support from one hand squeeze your buttocks together and try not to lean on the left and kick back with your right one two three four you shouldn't feel any strain on the back five six you should feel only the side hip working eight nine Ten. Super. Now let's work on the other side. So you can now take support with your right hand. Avoid leaning on the right leg, right side now. Okay, squeeze your buttocks a bit, a bit. Tuck your belly button in. Take weight on the right leg and 
diagonally kick with your left leg. Again, no strain on the back. You should feel only the side hip. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Comfortable? Okay, let's take a small breather. Let us all take a seat. Okay. Next exercise which we are going to do is for the front thigh muscles. It's to open up the leg all the way from a bending position. So let us all sit in a chair. With back nicely supported. Okay, leaning back. If anybody has any back issues, any disc bulges, preferably lean back a little and sit. Okay, don't sit all the way straight up. Take good support, take good cushions and sit back. Preferably sit on a high chair where your feet are not touching down. Now your knees are bent, you want to straighten one leg at a time. Okay, it's just the knee that is straightening up. I'm not lifting my thigh off. Just straightening up the knee, bringing it back. Okay, let's go. Back nicely supported. And let's go. Straighten all the way. One, you'll feel this part of the muscle working. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You might feel a slight stretch at the back of the thigh which is good. Okay, if anybody is getting back pain, then please stop this exercise. Make sure you're leaning back a little. Take, keep your back well supported. Thigh down and straighten up the knee. One, two, three, four, bend it all the way and straighten. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine and ten. Perfect. Everybody's comfortable? Okay. Now next we are going to do a couple of exercises in lying down. Is everyone okay with that? Okay, so I'll at least show these exercises. If it's possible to do them with me, it's fine. If not, you can try and practice them at home later. I'm just going to show you quickly. These are very important exercises to have. Okay, I hope you all can see me properly. So what I'm going to start with is lying on my side. Okay, so I'm now lying on my left side, left hand going under my neck. I have bent my knees. Okay, this is my straight. The knees were straight here. Now I have bent them. Okay, again, make sure your heels are lying on top of each other. I have bent my knees in such a way that my heels, my hip and my shoulder are in one line. Okay, now I'm going to keep my heels together. Keep one hand on my hip which is on top and make sure it is rolled front without arching my back. My back remains flat and just lift the top knee up. Heels are together again. I'm just lifting the top knee up. I should feel some pressure generated here on the side hip. Nothing here on the thigh or the front of the hip. Everything is here at the side hip. Okay, so I keep my hand here because what will tend to happen? I will tend to fall back. So that shouldn't happen. So for that to not happen, keep your hip, hand on the hip and lift the top knee up. Ready? Heels, knees bent, heels on top of each other, hand on the back, top of hip, back flat and lift the top knee up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Yes, comfortable. Same exercise can be done on the other side. 
you just want to uh, lie on the other side right side keep the left leg on top heels together and do the same exercise okay so that's one exercise which is very very important and which helps a lot in terms of knee pain and knee rehabilitation and keeping your knee health now second one is bridging uh which is also known as setu badhasana yoga okay i'm going to quickly show you you're going to lie on your back okay knees bent hip legs are a little wider they're not touching each other they are a little apart such that your heels are in the center of in line with the center of your hip now you're going to keep your hands down push your heels into the floor and lift your hips up okay but anybody who has any back issues please don't do these exercises before consulting your practitioner or general practitioner or any physio okay here we want to try and keep the back flat as you lift up you will feel that the back is arching we don't want that to happen so try to roll your tailbone back okay tailbone back flatten your back so that whole of your lower back is touching the bed maintain it that way use your hips to push you up and come down even if it is just a one or two inch distance it's fine but keep make sure to keep your back flat okay so you're going to use your hips to pull you up 1 2 3 4 again back to me flat 5 6 dig your knees down 7 squeeze your hips 8 nine and yes so this is a very good exercise because it prepares your knees to start taking a little weight start working your hips and your back together okay now in terms of functional exercises we are going to do some sit to stand which mimics your squat and we are going to do some heel walking and toe walking which helps in getting good balance which also helps in getting good ankle strength Okay, so to do sit to stand, be near a firm object. If possible, take some support from the wall right next to you. Now, first thing you are going to do is make sure that your knees are bent to ninety ninety. Your heels are right under your knees. Okay, and then you are going to dig your heels into the floor. So, if you want, you can scooch front on the in the chair such that your heels are right under your knees. Now, keep your hands in the front. Take your heels down, squeeze your buttock to come up, and slowly sit back. You want to sit back in that same chair, but not with a jerk. Don't let yourself fall back on the chair. You want to control it. Okay. So heels under the knees, shift a little front on the chair, hands in the front, squeeze your buttocks to get yourself into standing, and slowly sit back. Let's do five of these. Straight, get up, squeeze your buttocks. That's one. Slowly sit back down. Squeeze and up. Two, and sit back down. Squeeze and up. Three, and down. Squeeze and up. Four, and sit back nice and slow. And last one, squeeze and up, and sit back down slow. Yes. Make sure you're not leaning front all the way. You want to keep your back upright, shoulders facing front. So you're using your hips to pull yourself up. Yes. So this is squats. This this is will help you in strengthening your thighs and hips and makes transitions easy. But if you have a lot of knee pain, avoid these exercises. Do the ones in which you're not taking a lot of load on the knee. Okay, this comes as the later part of your strength. But to keep your knees healthy, you can start with this exercise also. Now we are just going to do simple toe walking. Okay, so you are going to get on your toes and maintain that and walk. Okay, let's take one round across the hall. Ready? Get on your knees, heels or toes. Knees are straight, and I am just going to walk straight. If possible, be around the walls or finish one whole round and come back. 
yes and then heel walking so now same way as we were on toes now we are going to be on heels lift the toes off make sure you are taking more support and then walk from heel to heel yes around 10 steps stretch to this 10 steps 6 7 8 9 10 and relax yes so this is to strengthen the ankle muscles get the knees to stretch out and start taking load and the last one very good exercise which can be done is walking backwards okay so if you watch me be near a wall support take some wall support and start walking back backwards this has shown research has shown that this helps a lot with in terms of knee health because you activate your hips and knees very well when you walk backwards and also works on your balance but if you have any issues in terms of balance, please be careful while doing this exercise. Make sure you are taking some wall support and walk across backwards. Yes, this can be done simply as a part of your daily walking routine at the end also, just walking backwards. So I'm just going to show you how you walk with your feet and heels. You're going to lift your leg, place the toes and then the heel. Okay. Lift the leg, toe first, then the heel. Toe first, then the heel. Yes. That has to be the walking path. Perfect. So these are the basic exercises which will help in strengthening and maintaining mobility around the knee. Now a little bit of stretching is also very important because if the muscles are tight, as we said earlier also, if they are tight, they will not allow you to move well. They will not allow a good shock absorption. Okay, so we are going to stretch the back of the calf, front of the thigh, back of the thigh and a little bit of the front knee. Four things we are going to stretch. Okay, so to stretch the calf first, we are going to stretch it in standing. Okay, I am going to show you. If I want to stretch, remains behind now in this case, I want to stretch the right leg. So the right leg is behind. Left leg is front. I am standing facing the wall. Okay. I have kept my hands on the wall this way. Taking good support. Not losing my balance. Now if you watch my feet, the leg which is behind, heel of that leg has to be done on the floor. Okay. Knee has to be straight and just shift my weight front on the wall. So I will get a good stretch on the calf. Okay. Again, heel is down of the leg which is to be stretched, which is behind. Heel is down, knee straight and I am just shifting weight front. Getting a good stretch in the calf. Hold that for 10 seconds. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now other leg, so I want to stretch my left leg, so left leg goes back, right comes front, left heel is now knee straight and I am just shifting my weight front on the right leg, keeping the left knee straight, hold, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and relax. Okay. So that was to stretch the back of the calf. Now we want to stretch the front of the thigh. Okay. So preferably stand near support. Okay. Again, people who have back pain, be careful of leaning, not leaning front when you do the stretch. Okay. We are standing, taking good support. Try to touch your heel to your buttock. Okay. Hold your foot from below near the ankle. Take support from other hand across the wall and get the stretch. Don't let your knee go front or back and leaning front. Back remains upright. Take support. Heel to buttock and hold. You will stretch. Get a good stretch in the front thigh. Three, four. You can also take support with both the hands if you are comfortable. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, 
they preferably take support with one hand prakash ji and then bend the other leg try to get your heel to your buttock as much as you can as much as you can don't pull it a lot just take it front if you're not able to hold it with the hand just try to bend it and hold it there you will still get a slight stretch at the front thigh 3 4 5 but make sure to hold it there 6 7 8 9 10 yes now we are going to do two hip stretches which are very simple which can be done in sitting okay so if you are traveling for long hours you are feeling your back and hip getting stiff you can do these stretches also so when you are sitting if one foot is down resting nicely you want to lift the other leg support it with the hands put the ankle on the other knee again people who have sciatica or back issues be careful by doing this stretch do it only if you are not getting pain okay now once you have put your leg on top you are lifting the heel holding the heel from one hand holding the knee from the other helping it to bring it up here now once it is here you are placing your left hand on the right ankle right hand on right knee and you are just pushing gently down with your right hand on the right knee just a very gentle stretch you will get a nice stretch at the back of your hip hold that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and relax okay now the other leg hold left knee with left hand right left ankle with right hand and bring it up if you are not able to bring it up pull up put a small pillow under the knee which will support it and then bring it up as much as only as much as you can and push slightly down with your left hand on the left knee 1 2 3 4 if you are able to bring your midway shin across also it's fine whichever way you are able to do if not just put a small pillow at home under the knee and try to get it up till here and hold the thigh even that is fine okay so that was to stretch the back of the hip again people who have sciatica or back pain be very careful while doing this stretch do it only if you don't have any current pain or tingling or numbness okay now we are going to stretch do one last stretch try to get hold of the thigh from below with both your hands and pull your knee towards the opposite shoulder again back pain people please avoid this stretch okay knee to opposite shoulder and as much as you can sir take good back support so that you don't strain your back very little bit even if you are able to lift up which is okay and hold it using your hand strength hold 2 3 Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, other side, hands under the thigh. Make a clasp under the thigh and just lift them off. That's it. And hold one very gentle stretch at the back of the hip. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. It may happen that you have restricted hip joints and knee joints, so go very gentle with the stretch. Even a ten percent of stretch is good enough. Don't try to push and pull your leg a lot. Be very very careful. As you keep doing the stretches regularly, the ranges will get better. Yes. So don't push a lot, sir. okay done for the day so i have tried get, get, giving getting you all through a brief routine you want to pick and choose exercises that you are comfortable doing with that you feel are good enough and safe for you that are not going to harm your back or ankle pain try to pick a few of them and add them to your daily exercise routine you can do the basic ankle exercises in standing and the knee exercises in sitting as a part of your Warm up before your walks. 
if you are going for regular walks you can do a little bit of calf stretching and hip stretching once you are back from the walk do stretches only when your body is warm do some mobility move movements that is when you are moving and coming back sort of movements before you go for a strength training session before you go for walks or before you go for holding asanas in yoga okay so i hope i could help you a little bit with your knee health and that's all from me from for the day